Mm. Hello. First Facebook Live since before Easter. And I slept in. It's morning for me. I'm Kim Willis. It is morning for me. For some of you, it's nighttime. So uh, I'm feeling a bit buggy, a bit of buggy. My eyes are a bit puffed up, so I thought I'd wear these sunglasses. Yeah, so you can't see. You can't see the, the, my eyeballs and the, the bags under my eyes. Never mind. I'll take them off anyway because I'm feeling lucky. Got a good topic? How to make big money from a Facebook group. Big money from a Facebook group. It's, uh, it's a topic that's a little bit close to my heart because I've indeed done that. I've done it uh, several times. And uh, the Facebook group strategy is, is one that I like to champion because, hey, you can make money from a Facebook group, big money. And it can be a small Facebook group. Small, how to make, how to make big money from a small Facebook group. Just let me check that. Did I write that in there? Oh, let me change that. Let me change that, golly. See, first day back from Easter. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, um, there we go. From, what am I doing? Yeah, it is there, it is there. Sorry, I didn't quite see it. Yeah, how to make money from a small group, a small Facebook group or a small Facebook page. Can you make money from a small group or page? I say, yes, you can, you can. And I'm gonna be, um, be running a training from one of my Facebook groups next week, next week. And that's what it'll be called, how to make money from a small Facebook group, from a small group, a small group of people. That's all you want, a small group of the right people, the right people, the people that resonate with you, the people that um, are in your niche, they're a good fit, that's what you need. And you need a relationship with them. It may not necessarily be a one-on-one -on -one relationship with them, but some kind of a relationship. I have a small YouTube channel. I don't have that many followers on that YouTube channel. I can't remember what it is right now, but it's not that many. But I've made great money over the years from that YouTube channel. Why? Because the leads that, that came from it, the leads that were generated were often quality leads, quality leads, and they like my stuff. My messaging was super targeted. That's one of the keys to success. I'm just giving you a little bit of a clue here. My, when I started using these tribe builder, warm audience marketing, uh, warm audience building strategies via Facebook groups, I made money in my first month. Now, it wasn't very much money. It was hundreds of dollars, not thousands of dollars, but I made money. Most people don't make any money from their Facebook group or indeed their Facebook page. They don't. They don't make money. All they get is heartache and heartburn and stress and pulling their hair out. Yet I made money from a Facebook group in the first month, my Facebook group. And uh, nine months later, that group produced $25,000 of, I was an affiliate marketer, this is three, three years ago, I was an affiliate marketer, so that was $25,000 of commissions, not of sales, the sales were higher, much higher. Commissions, commissions, that's the stuff that I keep, you see? <laughs> yeah. So you don't, need to, you don't need to have a big group. You don't need to have a big page with lots and lots of fans. Sometimes you might get intimidated by that. Like I, uh, on the weekend, I was just, I was staying, I stayed off uh, Facebook more or less 100%, but uh, I wanted to check a couple of things. So I logged in and um, there was a page that I wanted to check, someone else's page. And they've got over a million followers, a million likes or fans. It was a marketing coaching guy called Sam Ovens. Yeah, 1.1 million, I think it was, something like that, a page. He's also got a group, and his group's got um, ooh, maybe 40,000 members in the group, 30 to 40,000, something like that. I can't remember. but. But, the, but his page, 1.1 million 
And you look at that and you think, oh, my God, how can I compete? How can I ever, um, you know, do what those guys are doing? Well, my question back to you is, why do you need to? I don't think you do. I don't think you do. Because I made money with my Facebook group in my first month and there were less than 100 members. My second Facebook group, I made money in my first month, less than 50 members. 50, less than 50. It was about 46, something like that. I made money. I won't tell you how much money I made because you won't believe, you wouldn't believe it. It was significant money. Okay. Now, was I dead cold to those people? No. I already had a relationship with them before they joined the group. But the fact is, they spent a heap of money with me and I made a heap. Small group. Small group. So that second group, it's still a small group. It's only 1,300 uh, members. It's growing. But we're careful about who we add to the group. That's one of the points. So you don't need to have a big following to make money. Even if you're not using Facebook groups, even if you, you don't have a Facebook business page, maybe you're just working, using, working with your personal profile, you don't need a lot of people who we might call fans. You might say they're fans. Look, 30. 30 true fans. Whoa, that's valuable. 30 true fans. Look, even 10. 10 true fans, people that really love what you're doing. Hmm, maybe two or three of them are going to buy. True fans. So let's get the focus right here. See this? What does that look like? Can you read it? The anchovies. Little fish. Tiny little fish. About that long. These are fillets. The, the actual anchovy is a bit bigger than that, but they're still very small fish, right? And the way they're consumed, particularly in Europe, uh, people, they're very popular there. Not so popular in the Anglo countries because they have a very strong flavour. They've got a lot of salt, okay? But people might, like me love them as well. I love them. But I wouldn't eat them by themselves because it's too strong. But in a salad or something like that, yeah anchovies boy do they pack a punch do they pack a flavor punch tiny little fish anchovies there's something else now if you're not this is another euro type thing because I'm in the euro European foods this this one these are small cucumbers you might call cucumbers some countries call, cultures call them gherkins these are small but In France, they call them cornichons, okay? Now, this is an Australian uh, brand, all right? This is an Australian brand, so they're calling them, you know, uh, ger gherkins or cucumbers or something like that. They're not calling them cornichons, but I call them cornichons because I live in a former French colony, right? So they're, they're called cornichons here, and you can buy them anywhere. But in Australia, for instance, in Anglo-type countries, they're harder to come by. But if I'm going to eat a cucumber, I'm going to have this type of cucumber. Small, packs a punch, lots of great texture, crunchy, fantastic. Eat it with cheese, something like that. Yeah, small. Small can be beautiful. And this flies in the face of uh, a message that I read many years ago in a book called The Magic of Thinking Big. And I think the guy's name was Schwartz. It was, I mean, it was a long time ago, the magic of thinking big. And I like what the guy said, and he's right. It's good to think big. It really is good to think big. It's good to expand our vision of what is possible with our lives, with our businesses and so on. But sometimes we can achieve a lot with small numbers. We can. We can achieve a lot. And particularly, this is particularly the case if you're a, um, you're a personal brand, you're a personal brand, okay? So who, are usually, who, who usually need to position themselves as personal brands? Consultants, 
various experts, uh, creators, authors, coaches, affiliate marketers even. I position myself as a, as, an, as a personal brand about, I started doing it about two or three years after I started. That was in 2008, 2009. So I set up a blog and things like, did things like that. Position myself as a personal brand. And what I realized early on is that you don't need a huge following. Now, I didn't have Facebook groups. I didn't know anything about Facebook way back in 2007, 2008, 2009. I didn't have a Facebook account, right? But I was doing it in other ways. I, I set up a YouTube channel and I was happy to have a small following as long as it was it it was it consisted of the right type of people. The right type of people. I was happy for that. Uh, I had a blog, as I said. I set up a blog and I did a few things to that would help with the um, search engine so that some of my blog posts would perhaps show on the first page of a uh, if someone was searching on that key keyword phrase, that key phrase, I didn't get a lot of traffic to my blog posts, not a lot, but I got the right traffic because the content was laser targeted to a specific group of people, a small group, a micro niche. You can make great money with micro niches if it's the right micro niche and if you have the right offer for that micro niche. And I'm not talking about a $20 ebook. You know, it's okay to offer a $20 ebook as long as it leads to a $1,000 thing or a $5,000 thing or a $10,000 thing or a $50,000 thing. See? Big money from small numbers. Big money from small numbers. That's it. So I just wanted to have that this uh, quick word uh, to you. Uh, the other one I did the other day was 45 minutes. So this is not going to be 45 minutes. I have no idea what, what the time is at the moment. Let me check. Okay, 15 minutes. I think I'll, I think I'll wrap it up. I'll wrap it up at 15 minutes. I just wanted to say to you, re-emphasize the point. You can make big money from small groups. You can make big money from a small business page as well. You can make big money from a small group of Facebook friends. We're talking the Facebook platform. You can take this thinking and apply it to other platforms as well, of course. Providing that you've got the right offer at the right price point and it perfectly matches the needs, the wants of your target audience. Maybe it helps solve a problem for them. You can help solve them a problem. They'll take your arm off for it if it's packaged and presented properly. That's my message. That's my message. Take it or leave it, but that is my message. And focusing on uh, niche markets, small niche markets, small groups of people, got to be good, got to be good. I was listening to a guy on the weekend. His name is, uh, well, his name, well, I guess it still is. He died, unfortunately, not long ago. And his name's Roy Hargrove. Now, he's a jazz guy, okay? So I was trained as a jazz musician when I was young and all of that. Still got my guitar. Guitar is with me now, my baby. Um, that guitar, that guitar uh, was given to me on my 30th birthday. I wouldn't sell it. I was offered a lot of money for it because it's a classic. Run. I wouldn't sell it because I love my guitar. But this guy was a trumpet player. Now. He was a small guy. He was like five foot three, Roy Hargrove. And he died a few months ago at the young age of 49. Very sad. And I was listening to, listening to some of his music on the weekend, on YouTube and uh, other places as well. And he didn't have a huge audience. He did expand his audience beyond the, the normal uh, group of people who are, you know, died in the wall jazz fans. He did look for a bigger audience, but he would not compromise his music. He didn't cross over into pop music or R and B soul. Uh, he did with one little project, yeah, but but generally he played straight ahead jazz. He he honoured the jazz masters from the past, 
fabulous bebop era, but he gave it a fresh sound. He modernized it without compromising, okay? So he still had a niche audience. He still had a niche audience. He was never mainstream, and most people who will be watching this replay will never have heard of Roy Hargrove. I would say 99% of the general population would never have heard of Roy Hargrove. He was not a pop icon, but he did expand the pie and he made a pretty good living for himself because he, he uh, converted mere fans into rabid fans, raving fans, okay, who loved his style of music. But he was never mainstream. He was never big. He didn't have big numbers. He had tens of thousands of fans, not millions of fans. But for tens of thousands of fans meant that whenever he came to town, he went to Paris or somewhere like that. He's an American guy. Um, or he played in New York or something like that. It was packed out. It was packed out and people were paying good money, okay, because Roy knew that if he could win them to his cause, where he's playing as kind of a refreshed version of the old music, they would follow him all over the place. They'd buy his music, they'd go to his concerts, etc. okay? Making big money from small audiences who pay top dollar. So I'll leave you with that story. You, and, and then let's bring it home. Let's bring it back to the Facebook group, the marketing side of things. If you are a coach, a consultant, an expert, an author, a creative person, a change maker, someone who realizes that you need to build a brand around you, this particular strategy will work very, very well for you. How to make money, how to make big money from a small group. So if you want to um, plug into the training, I haven't set the date, but it will be next week. You can join my group, Try Builder Community, make an application to join the group there, and I shall check it out and I will probably approve you. There's a couple of questions you need to ask, answer. Uh, but if you do that, I look forward to seeing you in the group and then you'll get updates and notification about this training. And it's a free training, by the way. It's a free training, how to make money from a small. I've given you a few clues as to what we'll be talking about, but it'll be much more than that because I will go into detail. I'll show, I'll show you how, how I, I made 25,000 from one group with small numbers, how I made almost 30,000 from another group, how I, how I made uh, multiple six figures now using the Facebook group strategy as the bedrock and then supplementing that with uh, linked and related strategies, okay? So it was a kind of a multifaceted approach. But the heart of it, or the, the foundation of it was the Facebook group. It was the Facebook group, okay? Without the Facebook group, I wouldn't even know to do any of the other add-on things that made the whole strategy work so well. It's like a little ecosystem. So I'll be talking about the ecosystem method that I use. And I'm still using it today. I'm in the process of um, stepping it up, moving it up to the next level. So I won't just talk to you about what I did in the past and what I'm doing currently. I'll also talk to you about strategies I'm going to be using in the future, all part of this tribe builder, warm audience building, hot lead system that I've been developing. All right. So there you go. Try build a community. You can join that if you want. If you want, doesn't matter to me, but if you want, if you if you want to get hold of that training, because I'll only be running it through that group. I won't be I won't be doing it uh, you know via my personal profile or something like that. Okay, this is Kim Willis. All right, have a good one and I'll be back in a couple of days on this page. Million dollar, million dollar tribes with another pithy lesson. Okay, the magic of thinking small and then big, make big money as a result. Okay, bye bye.